Yes, Mr. Moore. Commissioner, we've now concluded the evidence in this seventh and final round of public hearings for this Royal Commission. Over the course of the past two weeks, we've heard evidence from the CEOs of six of the largest financial service entities in Australia, CBA, Westpac, Macquarie, NAB, ANZ and AMP. We've heard evidence from the chairs of the boards of three financial services entities, CBA, NAB and Bendigo and Adelaide Bank. And we've heard evidence from the chairs of the two regulators, ASIC and APRA. As I said in our opening address last week, this round of hearings was different to the first six rounds. Our focus was not on identifying further instances of misconduct, but on understanding why misconduct occurred and what can be done to prevent it in future. For that reason, unlike in previous rounds of hearings, council assisting will not identify any particular findings as being open on the evidence, nor will there be a process for the entities involved in this round of hearings to make further submissions to the Commission. Instead, we anticipate that the matters raised over the past two weeks will play a role in informing the recommendations that you make in your final report. As this is the final round of our public hearings, it's appropriate that I say something more broadly about the work of the Commission throughout the public hearings. Since February, the Commission has conducted public hearings over the course of 68 hearing days. Over the course of those 68 days, many of which were long days, we have heard evidence from 134 witnesses, some of whom gave evidence more than once. We have tendered almost 400 witness statements and we have tendered more than 6,500 exhibits including the exhibits to those witness statements. The witnesses who gave evidence during our public hearings have included representatives of financial services entities, banks, mortgage brokers, financial advice licensees, superannuation trustees and insurance companies. They have included representatives of the regulators, ASIC, APRA and the ACCC, and external dispute resolution bodies like FOS. They have included representatives of consumer groups, financial counselling services and industry bodies. And they have included consumers who gave evidence about their interactions with financial services entities. Consumers who we chose because their experience were representative of experiences within the community. I would particularly like to thank this last group of witnesses, the consumers who agreed to come and give evidence in the Commission's public hearings. Many of them travelled long distances and gave evidence about their private financial affairs in a very public forum. I know that they did not always find that easy, but their willingness to give evidence about their experiences has greatly assisted the work of the Commission and I am grateful to them. It is appropriate that I express my gratitude to others as well. The work involved in presenting seven rounds of public hearings addressing the matters covered by this Commission's terms of reference within the time frame set by those terms of reference has been enormous. It is important that I publicly record my sincere appreciation to every member of the team of council who have assisted you throughout these hearings. Those council comprise not only the other four barristers formally appointed to assist you, Michael Hodge QC, Albert Donnelly, Eloise Diaz and Mark Costello, but four further barristers who have worked with us throughout the year and whose contribution has been invaluable. They are Claire Schneider, Mark Hosking, Sarah Zelesnikov, and Tim Farhall. I am deeply grateful for the immense amount of work that our team of council has undertaken, for the quality of that work and the way they have each conducted themselves in undertaking that work. I also wish to record my thanks to the team of solicitors from the Australian Government Solicitor who have assisted us throughout the year. The dedication and tireless effort of our team of solicitors, which at 20 people 
is no doubt smaller than many would think, has been critical to the presentation of these hearings, as has the assistance of our four administrative support staff. Finally, these hearings could also not have taken place without a great deal of assistance from the staff of the Office of the Royal Commission, who have provided invaluable support and expertise with the logistics and practicalities of conducting our hearings. Thank you, Commissioner. That concludes our final closing address. Thank you, Ms Orr. Uh, I, uh, of course, uh, have a further and more formal opportunity uh, in my final report to acknowledge and thank those who've worked so hard to bring us to this point in the work of the Commission, but it's right that I should say something publicly and say it now. Uh, I am, of course, especially grateful uh, to you, Ms Orr, uh, and all of the Council assisting, Mr Hodge, Mr Donnelly, Ms Diaz, Mr Costello, Ms Schneider, Mr Hosking, Ms Lesnikoff, Mr Farhall. Your work has been, and dare I say, will continue to be, uh, of immense help. I am also especially grateful for the work that has been done by the Australian Government Solicitors Team, uh, led so admirably as it has been by Mr Simon Daly and Mr Simon Sherwood. None of what uh, has happened, whether in the hearing room or in the work of the Commission outside hearings, could have occurred without the immense uh, amount of work uh, that AGS has done and done so skillfully. Now, in that connection, I should say publicly that I recognise the intensity of work that has been required of those acting for the entities whose conduct has been the subject of examination. And I should also say publicly that I recognise that, much more often than not, those acting for the entities and agencies concerned have sought to cooperate with the Commission and with solicitors assisting in seeking to deal with the requirements that the Commission has made. The work of the Office of the Royal Commission uh, has been uh, handled uh, masterfully uh, by Ms Tony Pirani and Ms uh, Liz Brayshaw and to them and to their staff uh, we owe much. Uh, I should also say how grateful I am to uh, Mr Justice Alstegren, the Chief Justice Designate of the Family Court and the judges of the Family Court of Australia that the Commission has been permitted to use this courtroom uh, the staff uh, of uh, Commonwealth Law Courts Melbourne and of the Family and Federal Courts have been of very great assistance uh, in that regard. Inevitably, uh, there are some phrases that have entered the vocabulary uh, over the course of this commission. Of those phrases, one of them, six words long, can I show you a document, would not have been possible without the work uh, of our document system providers, Law in Order. Uh, they have managed not only the electronic hearing facilities, but also the immense database that has been assembled over this last year. I'm very grateful to them for their work. Then there's the transcript of proceedings supplied by Auscript. We've been fortunate indeed to have the services of Ms Helen Lubka as our stenographer. Her skill remains for me a cause of continuing wonder. Her calm attention to her tasks is a continuing cause of admiration, but I rather suspect that this passage of the transcript will read inaudible on tape. <laughs> Last, may I say something to those who ordinarily sit in the back row of the hearing room and to those in the media room. This has been a public inquiry. The proceedings have been open to the public and they've been streamed. They've been the subject of reports and comment, 
in all forms of the media. And so they should have been. The Commission has sought to do what it can to assist the media in performance of their job, but we've done that by making information available generally to the public. The Commission has not sought to influence how the media has reported. We've not backgrounded, we've not provided the media or anyone with any information about what witnesses are to be called or subjects covered, except by posting what we have on the website. We've not commented on what's occurred in the course of evidence. It's been for the media and for the media alone to decide what will be the subjects of their reports and what, if any, comments they may choose to make about what the Commission has done. And that, again, is as it should be. But it's also right that I recognise the role that the media has played in this being a public inquiry by reporting on the work of the Commission. We will adjourn.